So what is the, the last thing, uh, ventricular assist device? Uh, that uh, I have this picture, which shows that you can see this left ventricle. So the left ventricle function is not good enough, then uh, the function of left ventricle is a pump. So we put the pump here to the left ventricle and then pump up goes to the aorta. So this requires a power ener energy so that there's an electrical wire connected to external battery. So VAD or left ventricle assist device is not an artificial heart uh, because artificial heart designed to assume the whole cardiac function. And also uh, it requires removing patient heart and then put this artificial heart. But this one is really supporting and assisting. So that's why ventricular assist device. However, think about this device uh, when you are waiting for total heart uh, transplantation. So what kind of complication can happen? So first of all, this big biological material inside our body, then our immune system will try to reject this. So we may need an immunosuppression drug so that we drop down our natural immune activity so that this device can be uh, not rejected. Because of this, there's a lot more risk of infection for the patient. You can also think this, uh, this part of the electrical wire passing through the skin. So there's a higher risk of infection as well. And another, so now we are directly touching this device with the, our blood system. So blood, which is normally flowing uh, on, uh, on endothelial layer, now this is different. So there's higher risk of clotting. So these clots can form and then shed to a brain that will cause a more uh, frequent stroke aspects. And because of this, uh, the patient may need anticoagulant treatment, which means uh, to reducing the blood clotting. And that actually uh, leads to coagulopathy and uh, more of a bleeding risk. So there's a number of these lists of side effects and complications. So those who the patient need to be well informed about uh, what this uh, before uh, this uh, VAD uh, uh, surgery. So here, a uh, little more of explanation. The devices are generally resulting blood flowing over non-biologic surface. It predisposes the blood to clot. And so there's a need for anticoagulation. And for example, one device is to, uh, to resolve this problem. It designed a biological surface, surface uh, from fibrin, fibrin coating, so it does do not require long-term anticoagulation treatment. Uh, but still, the patient needs an aspirin, which does have some anticoagulation uh, function. Unfortunately, this biological surface may also predispose the patient to infection because this turned out to be uh, reducing certain kind of leukocyte or white blood cell is, uh, is a, a reduced. That means our an, uh, function against infection is uh, a lower. So now let's get into a little bit of a history of biological materials. So very long time ago, you can see um, surgical suture uh, to repair wound sites is probably the first very old uh, biomaterials. And the second polymethyl methyl acrylate or we call it as a PMMA, uh, which is acryl or acrylic glass or uh, more famously uh, known as its uh, brand name called the plexiglass. So this has been used for dental basis, artificial teeth, surgical uh, splinting, and hip prosthesis, which is also from a very long time ago. Another biomaterial that I want to discuss is a uh, catheter, which is written as a catheter, uh, a thin hollow tube formed uh, out of a polymer, which serves uh, as a, a sometimes very important function. So for example, in history, Fritz uh, Bleicher-Roder uh, 
who first performed a catheterization with his own femoral artery more than 100 years ago. So femoral artery is in, on your big thigh, flex. So this has a, a big artery, so we can insert this catheter to here, uh, which go back to the heart. And in history, there's another one, <clears throat> Verna Fulkman, <clears throat> the story, who is a, was a pioneer because he first demonstrated cardiac catheterization, meaning that we can put catheter or hollow tubes through our own uh, vessel or vascular conduit reaching to the heart, inside the heart. He demonstrated in 1929. Uh, the story is fascinating, so I put here uh, the link of this in uh, online library, so you can read it. Uh, basically, he was a very young um, resident doctor um, who, who was thinking that maybe catheter could be directly into, uh, inserted into the heart. Of course, at that time, that was regarded as a fatal, but he, he wanted to prove his idea uh, but his chief rejected the idea, and uh, he ends up with by persuading uh, a nurse that uh, the nurse agreed only if he can do this into the nurse, not him. But he tricked the nurse by asking her to do while like cutting her the nurses. But in fact, he actually put the catheter. This is a urethral catheter, so it's a narrow to not the nurse, but his own um, <clears throat> vein in his arm. So it, after that, he bring this with the nurse to went into the x-ray room and insert more up to 60 centimeter. And he observed that the tip of the catheter in fact ends up in the right atrium of his eye. So with his x-ray imaging, you know, this is a famous story that it led to a Nobel Prize in 1956. However, in his own story that um, he did this one to himself uh, instead of uh, doing this in, uh, animal study, which came later on. Um, unfortunately, however, he didn't pass his uh, PhD uh, exam that uh, he had a trouble in his career, but later on, after he got Nobel Prize, uh, he become he worked as a urologist. But this is a, a kind of how in history a discovery has been made, and because this led to a very important uh, modern cardiac catheterization lab, or simply we call it as a cath lab, and this is a, a you know a major hospital has an examination room. Uh, with a diagnostic imaging device, uh, equipment, usually a real-time x-ray, to visualize the arteries of the heart. Uh, that visualization is done by an, a contrast agent inserting into the bloodstream that uh, during the short time of distribution, one can actually see the narrowing of the, uh, or stenosis of the, the carotid artery and chambers of the heart. So this is a, a, an example figure, a photo of cardiac cath lab. You can see a patient here, and this is real-time x-ray, and you can see these uh, uh, pictures to show the diagnosis and during the treatment procedure. And I uh, happen to have a cardiology friend, uh, cardiologist, so I visited there and there was a, a patient who happened to have a right a blood clot just uh, uh, blocking her um, uh, coronary artery. So it was an emergency. So there we have to wear um, an apron with a lead because there are x-rays coming. So we are at the risk of exposing uh, this x-ray radiation. So he inserted this catheter onto this uh, femoral artery uh, uh, area with a shift, and that catheter uh, goes through this aorta, then it goes to the left atrium, uh, uh, not necessarily left atrium, it goes to eventually to that blocked uh, vessel coronary artery, and he inserted a tool 
to grab that blood clot and then suck it and then take it out so, so that otherwise the patient could have died. So this happens a lot and um, this cardiac cath lab served as a very important tool for diagnosis for people who have a heart problem. So with this, um, next time we will discuss about biological response to biomaterials, especially coagulation cascade and response to biomaterials in contact with the blood. Thank you for your attention.